The Washington Wizards have fired head coach Wes Unsell Jr. after only two and a half seasons. Is he the one to blame for this mess? And what does it mean going forward? Let's talk about it here on Rep the District. Let's go. <music> Greetings and salutations and welcome to this instant reaction Instapod here on Ref the District. I'm the stoner. We are a proud member of the Believe Network and we hope you are in tune with everything that we do, make sure you hit that like, hit that subscribe button here, and hit that notification so you're sure to get all of the latest news coming from Ref the District. We don't talk just commanders. We always keep an eye on the Wizards, on the Caps, and on the Nats, and when big things happen, we bring it to you and kind of break it down for you because we do have insiders within those organizations as well, and so we like to bring kind of the news, what's going on inside, and all of the skinny so the Washington Wizards, as you know, have let go of their head coach, Wes Unsell Jr. You want to call it a firing. You want to call it a, a uh, change of scene, change of job position, whatever you want to call it. He has been bumped up into the front office. Well, I think they needed to do that because they owe him a lot of money. They just renewed him just a couple of months ago. So I, I really don't understand why they're firing or what they saw today that they didn't already see in the previous two years. But we'll get into that, uh, of course, as we go along. If you're kind of wondering who it's going to be, the new coach going forward, we'll talk about the interim coach at least, and then we'll see who it's going to be going forward. But there's going to be, we'll talk about that at the end. A lot of bets kind of being laid down already who the next coach is going to be here in Washington. And if you want to place a bet, look, there's no better place than at Bet Online. It's playoff time. The road to Vegas goes through San Francisco and Baltimore this weekend. Bet Online is your number one source for playoff football odds, stats, trends, and lines with everything from point spreads to hundreds of player performance props. Don't forget you can also vote and bet on the NBA. Don't vote. Bet on the NBA and uh, college basketball, hockey, uh, all of that stuff. Head to Bet Online today to stay updated on all the action. Bet Online. The game starts here. So let's talk about Wes Unsell Jr. First of all, why he got fired now and a little bit of his history. As Wizards fans know, he's been here for two and a half seasons. He was brought in to replace Scott Brooks, who was here for a while. Um, this was a, uh, a Tommy Shepard hire, which makes it really an Ernie Grunfeld hire because those two were two peas in a pod. They did things exactly the same way. They brought him in here specifically because of his defensive prowess. That's what his job was in Denver. They brought him to Denver to be that lead defensive assistant and to fix that defense over there. And he did a fantastic job when he was in Denver as an assistant. But everybody knows going from the assistant to the top dog is different. And that's why I always talk about with the commanders. Sure, I'm going to move to the commanders here just for one minute. Hang with me. You hire Ben Johnson because Ben Johnson's been great at running an offense. Running the whole team is a whole different animal. And that's what happened with Wes Unsell Jr. Sure, you can talk about the roster, and we will talk about the roster, but as a coach, it's your job to elevate your roster. And they were 35 and 47 his first year. They were 35 and 47 his second year, both very disappointing years, both with some all-star caliber players on that team. They had Bradley Beal, of course, last year they had Beal, Kuzma, and Porzingis and still could only win 35 games. So then this year comes along and they're 7 and 36 in the 43 games, basically half the season, 41 being half. And they were 7 and 36. But what is kind of baffling to me is that they gave him this extension in the offseason. Why did they do that and then just go ahead and whack him? You know. The roster that you gave this team, that general manager Will Dawkins and uh, monumental president Michael Winger, they know the roster that they were giving him. So it's not like you expected them to win, but seven and 36, that's a totally different animal. Seven and 36 bad is really, really, really bad. Just last week, they lost to, in one week, they lost to the worst team in the NBA, the Detroit Pistons, and they lost to the second worst team in the NBA the San Antonio Spurs. That'll usually get a guy fired. But I thought he was going to be the kind of guy who's just going to hang around and be to you know be that bridge coach to take them 
when they start getting better players in here uh, and then they would get a new coach. But look, I think what, what they said, what was coming from Dawkins and winger is that the team just wasn't even competitive in most games. Here's a stat that I thought was uh, it kind of floored me. 18 of their 36 losses, losses, they were down by at least 22 points in 18 of their 36 losses. Half the games that they lost, they were down by at least 22 points. That's not competitive. And, I mean, defensively, we've seen it. The def- defense was bad. But he can sit there, Wes Unsell Jr., or any coach, and we'll get to the interim coach here in a second, They can sit there and preach, preach, preach defense all they want. If the players aren't locked in defensively, it doesn't matter. Or they just don't have the talent to understand proper rotation on defense. Or they don't have the want to, or they don't have the energy, whatever it is. They just weren't getting it done. 7-36 and is disgustingly bad. So I guess a change had to be made. But, But no doubt, kind of like, again, with some of these guys, the the front office they have a lot of respect for number one the name number two the man they have a lot of respect for him so they kept him on in a front office role probably because they're going to pay him so they asked him to stay on but West Ensler Jr. is going to land on his feet at some point he might get a second chance at a head coaching job but he will get an assistant job whenever he's ready to move on from this organization but it just wasn't good He won 37% of his games in Washington. And I watch pretty much every game, although this last month I start watching the game and then I can't can't watch it. It's just not competitive. At least when Beal and them were here, at least you had a chance. At least you had hope that they're – there's no hope in these games. They get down immediately to to good teams, to bad teams. It doesn't matter. They'll have the fluky 30-point win on the road against Atlanta. Every once in a while, they'll have that. But they're not going to have any sort of consistent winning. They they just don't have the talent. They don't have the talent. And that's what the front office gave him. This is the roster that they gave him. But he wasn't able to elevate this team, any of the players. Defensively, they were the worst defensive team in the NBA. Sound familiar, Commanders fans? And they it was just obviously the energy wasn't there. The competitiveness wasn't there. And so they had to let him go. I get it. Had to, but I just don't understand why you give him an extension in the off season, give him a horrific roster and then say, go out there and perform. And then say, you know what? You're not doing the job well enough. We're going to let you go. So they did end up uh, obviously letting him go. And, but I mean, look at that roster. Uh, we were sold a bill of goods on Jordan Poole. Well, we thought he was going to be some sort of 27 to close to 30 point per game type of player. He's bad. I watch him. I can't stand watching Jordan Poole play basketball. Sorry, I can't. He's not committed. His energy isn't there. He I I he leads the league in in heat checks for a guy who's not actually on fire. He takes horrific shots. He has all these crazy moves and then ends up right back in the same spot. He doesn't actually break anybody down. He's too small to to guard anybody in that two position. And the one thing that drove me the most nuts about uh, this roster, or maybe Wes Unsell Jr., and you can talk about his use of timeouts, you can talk about his rotations, all that. He started the exact same lineup, 43 consecutive games. As bad as it got, he put the same guys out there. He wasn't holding people accountable. When Jordan Poole, game after game after game, was not performing, still put him out there in the starting lineup. And maybe Jordan Poole wasn't getting the minutes, and you could say, well, he wasn't getting the minutes. He was benching him for, for periods. That's fair, but there's there's an honor to being part of the starting five that goes out there. And you got to say, you know what? You're not doing it. You got to go sit down for a while, and let's try something different. We screamed about it all year with the commanders and, and the way the offense was struggling. Try something different, and he just wasn't uh, able to do that. All right, so who is the interim coach? Brian Keefe is now the interim coach. He's another guy who focuses a lot on defense. Look, he's been there for one game, and they gave up 123 points. It's not going to change. You're going to see the same thing going forward in terms of what this team is going to put out there on the floor. 
Uh, they've traded a few players and they look, they brought in Marvin Bagley Jr. I like Marvin Bagley Jr., but um, he's not the savior of the franchise. Neither is Bilal. Bilal is a piece. Bilal is not a uh, a guy you totally build around, but he is a guy that's going to be an important part moving forward. But Brian Keefe is here. He's a longtime assistant. He's been on like six different teams maybe uh, as an assistant coach. He's well-respected uh, as an assistant. I mean, they, they brought him to um, OKC originally. Uh, the team that was being put together there. So the front office was very aware of him, uh, this particular front office, because of their ties to OKC. And so they brought him along last year in 2023 as an assistant, still an assistant. Uh, he's credited for the development of SGA out there in Oklahoma City, uh, Shea Gilgis, Gilgis Alexander, who has turned into a stud, an all-star, all of that. Um, but uh I mean, the roster is not going to change for, for Brian Keefe, and so I don't expect the results to change either. And, you know, you know, it was just a couple of years ago I was thinking about this. Remember when they were 10-3? and three? They started the season 10-3. and three. It was Wes – I think that was Wes's first year. Yeah, it was 10-3, and three, and they had uh, Montrez Harrell uh, going out. Remember they were chanting MVP for Harrell during the um, early portion of the season, and then it just went all downhill and then, it's been nothing good since. And we thought, oh, this one's West Sunsell Jr. He's a, he's amazing. And anyway, the, that's in the past. So Brian Keefe is just going to be an interim for the rest of the year. Maybe they sign or or give him the the tag as the head coach for and he'll be the guy who's the bridge to the guy they bring in to eventually turn this franchise around when they start bringing in better players, which hopefully is right around the corner. Who do we see as coach in the future? Who's who's a guy that you kind of look at? I've heard this name a lot. I kind of like it, but I'm not 100% sure. Juwan Howard, former bullet Juwan Howard, who was here for a minute, right? He was here for a little bit, and he was quite successful. Got a humongous contract while he was here. At the time, it was a huge contract. He's at Michigan. Michigan's kind of down because why? They don't have the players. Um. Uh, but it's kind of, um, you know, he's wearing out his welcome there. He's had a few incidents, a couple of suspensions and all that. Maybe he's good for the NBA. I don't know. Maybe you just get some of these guys who, uh, who've who been longtime assistants to push it forward. And then at some point you figure it out. Maybe bring in uh, Adrian Griffin, who just got let go by the Bucks, Or isn't Budenholzer, uh, isn't he still out there? Uh, Brent Brown is back with the uh, Spurs. He was the guy who was with the Sixers for all those years. Bring him in. I don't know. It, it's We really have to look at this team, and it's going to be a long, slow build, and we're just going to have to suck it up with uh, a whole bunch of losses. But but again, the news, Wes Unsell, Wes Unsell Jr. has been fired from the Washington Wizards or reassigned upstairs to another position. Brian Keefe is now the head coach, the interim head coach, at least through the rest of this season. And if you've got any comments on it, let us know what you think. Make sure you hit that like. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And we, of course, are brought to you by Bet Online. And until next time, be a fan.